What's poppin', my fellow Vault Dwellers? It is me, MT, and welcome back to the Heavy Spoiler Show, y'all. I think most of us can agree that the new Fallout TV show on Amazon Prime freaking rules! Like, I mean, what other video game TV show do you know that has a severed human head of a science nerd as its main MacGuffin? You ain't gonna see that on an episode of Pokemon, man, I'll tell you what. But anyways, let's go on ahead and use our heads to see where the inevitable Season 2 of the show could be headed for each of our major your main characters in this series. So, crack open a Nuka Cola, save the cap for later, and let's dive into this dang thing. Now, first things first, is there even going to be a season two of Fallout? Well, as of the recording of this video, Amazon has yet to put out an official statement as to whether or not Fallout Season 2 is happening. However, if a recent report from Deadline is any indication, it would seem like the state of California has been made well aware of Amazon's intentions to continue expanding their live-action wasteland, as the government of California has been informed that the Season 2 production will be taking part of California's tax credit program when filming begins. So, if the state of California is gearing up for for a season two of Fallout, it's safe to say that we are indeed going to Vegas, baby. New Vegas, as that is of course where all signs point to you after the mind-boggling finale that had villains turn into heroes, and our main hero turned into the world's most disappointed daughter, as everyone would learn that former overseer Hank McClain is responsible for war crimes beyond human comprehension when he decided to nuke the still slowly flourishing town of Shady Sands. All because Shady Sands' existence threatened vault main goal of having their chosen people be the ones to inherit the planet. Not some random wasteland hippies who want to grow corn, sing kumbaya, and make sure everyone has power or whatever. Ugh, just grow up already. Who needs power? Every man for themselves. All you liberals just want cold fusion handouts. You know, back in my day, we had to go to the mines to get our cold fusion, all right? We had to walk several thousand miles to even get to the mine to mine for our cold fusion. But when the ghoul started sticking his lack of a nose into classified vault tech business by demanding to know where his family was, Hank McLean hit the jets and booked it straight to New Vegas to start a new life there. And like I mentioned in my Fallout Ending Explained video that you can check out here, there's a really high likelihood that we will see Hank McLean become the new ruler of New Vegas himself, and the people living in New Vegas now will probably end up just giving it to him. Partly because he'll ask politely for it, but mostly because of the handy dandy new power suit death machine that is now wrapped around his body. But you know what they say, uh, dress for the job that you want, and God knows that Hank is hankering for a job as the Mojave Wasteland's new murder manager, because that's all this menacing man knows how to do, and he's in a damn good position to take over too, considering that New Vegas was once ruled by one of Hank McClain's former colleagues just 15 years before the events of the first season of Fallout. Robert House of Robco, who we saw in live action in the finale, had a really close relationship with vault before the Great War, and much like Hank did, he would use the power of technology to keep his body alive alive for the past 200 years so that he could survive long enough to be the head of his New Vegas. So, since the establishment of New Vegas does technically fit within vault goals of one of their own rebuilding surface society in their image, Hank taking over Robert's operations and rebooting New Vegas as its new overseer seems like the most logical step for that character. And it's going to be so interesting to see both Lucy and the ghoul navigate New Vegas while trying to reach Hank, because when we last leave them both in season one, they are both looking for answers from Hank McLean himself, as someone with his position at vault would not only be able to fill the ghoul in on which cryopod his wife is sleeping in, but also so Lucy can discover what exactly happened to cause this nuclear apocalypse in the first place. Because you gotta remember what Cooper said about Hank McLean being the one that used to do his wife's dry cleaning. This guy was very close with Barbara Howard, so he most likely knows where she's at. But anyways, curiosity seems to be the main quality that binds both of these McLean children, with Norm's curiosity leading him to become trapped within Vault 31, unfortunately. Lucy's curiosity leading her to the wild and debaucherous streets of New Vegas would be so interesting as, up until her recent journey through the wasteland, Lucy's life has been relatively squeaky clean and wholesome. She hasn't really been in environments where sex, drugs, lying, and gambling were part of an everyday function community. So, seeing her father ending up running and ultimately profiting off of such an immoral environment would be quite the shock for Lucy, after Lucy spent most of her life trying to live up to his own good moral standards. 
But while Lucy is trying to navigate the unfamiliar world of New Vegas, the ghoul, of course, is going to be focused on finding his family. And something tells me that he's probably not going to like what he finds. I mean, I'm not even sure why he's even interested in reuniting with his wife at all, because she is literally responsible for the deaths of billions of people, along with the gaping hole in the middle of this man's face. Barbara Howard has wholeheartedly drank the vault Tech Nuka Kool-Aid, and she honestly don't give a damn about absolutely anyone who disagreed with vault Tech's policies. I mean, hell, she knew how much her husband loved and valued their household dog, and yet she was still more than willing to sacrifice that dog just so there was just a little bit more food for the rest of the vault dwellers. I don't know about you, but anyone who's willing to nuke their own dog for their own financial and personal benefit is beyond saving. So the ghoul is straight up setting himself for some big time disappointment, especially since vault Tech's number one priority for all of their high level superiors is for them to breed the next generation of super managers, people that were born for the sole purpose of leading and manipulating humanity into acting exactly the way that vault Tech wants while also revering vault Tech as their saviors. What do you think is most likely going to happen if both Barb and her daughter were to wake up from their cryogenic nap at the same damn time? Exactly what you'd expect from a controlling, manipulative, and evil mother. Immediate indoctrination. Because if Cooper's daughter is alive and grew up with her mom during this apocalypse, it's more likely than not that she's already been brainwashed to becoming just as unfeeling and ruthless as her mother was. But it really depends on how old Cooper's daughter is at this point in time. Because if she's still a popsicle child frozen in some science tube, then Cooper still has hope. But if both Barbara and her daughter woke up years ago, then I don't think that a brainwashed adult is going to be saved by a walking killer corpse claiming to be her daddy. We could actually be looking at a scenario where Cooper is forced to fight his wife and maybe even his own daughter too, because he no longer fits in with vault vision of their future. But let's move on to Maximus and the Brotherhood of Steel, because much like I brought up in my ending explain video, there is no damn way the Brotherhood of Steel isn't headed to New Vegas. Hank stole their battle technology for himself. And if I know anything about the Brotherhood of Steel, those motherfuckers are not going to let that slide. Like, they have literally lost men in the past to the wasteland simply for the goal of acquiring something as trivial and useless as a freaking toaster. So you better believe that they're going to track Hank down just as furiously as they went after the head. Because whoever has access to the most advanced forms of technology will ultimately rule the wasteland. And they cannot let the power armor just be left in their hands of somebody else. But another thing that I brought up in that ending explain video Video is how the Brotherhood would also want to control the Hoover Dam nearby as well, as that Hoover Dam is where New Vegas sourced all of their power in the Fallout New Vegas video game. And that dam has been a place that has piqued the interest of the Brotherhood before. So, Hank heading to New Vegas seems like a pretty good excuse to revitalize that desire to conquer the Hoover Dam in order to make their faction a lot stronger than it already is. But in regards to Maximus himself, I can definitely see Maximus being erected to a higher position within the Brotherhood, like that of a senior knight or maybe even a paladin. And I would love to see that for Maximus because it seems like this boy does not want any of that shit anymore. His journey with Lucy seems to have changed him forever, as Maximus originally started the series with a deep lust for power and recognition, and is now simply just craving a simple and calm life with Lucy. He learned that there is more to life than seeking glory. But now that he's the hero of the Brotherhood, after he's mistaken as the real killer of Moldaver, and successfully led the Brotherhood to the Cold Fusion Reactor's location, Maximus has now been cursed with the very thing that he once dreamt about. Out. Fame and responsibility. And with this new fame and responsibility, leaving the Brotherhood would become significantly more challenging. And everybody knows that the only way out the Brotherhood is in a mother freaking box. So I believe that Fallout Season 2 will show us a Maximus being miserable with all of his newfound glory and possibly even using his influence as a means to try to get back to Lucy. Because since he was knocked out by a power suited Hank at the very end of the finale, from his point of view, Lucy just up and disappeared after possibly being kidnapped by her her father, the very man responsible for his Shady Sands trauma as a child. So Maximus' main goal for season 2 would likely be to get to New Vegas to reunite with the woman that he loves and to possibly kill Hank for what he did to Shady Sands. But part of me would also like to see Maximus continue to journey up the ranks of the Brotherhood. Because you know what they always say, only those who do not seek power are qualified to wield it. 
Because Maximus isn't as motivated to become the greatest knight of all time, he is actually the best person to have authority within the Brotherhood. Because look at friggin' Quintus the Elder Cleric. When this dude was talking to Maximus about his ambitions to rule the Brotherhood and the Wasteland by acquiring the cold fusion technology, you could literally hear the greed oozing out of his mouth. Like, I'm surprised that he didn't choke on all that greed. The Brotherhood is in strong need of a good man as their leader, and it seems like, thanks to Lucy, Maximus is learning the power of selflessness, love, and overall thoughtfulness for others. So it would be kind of dope to see him become the leader of his chapter of the Brotherhood over time in order to transform that chapter into something better. But before I end this video, I do want to touch on what could happen to the Vault Dwellers of both Vault 32 and 33. As when we last saw them, Betty had split Vault 33 in half, with half of their number being sent to what remains of Vault 32 with Steph with the eye patch in charge. But since we did learn that Vault 32 was hit with incredibly hard times and had seemingly run out of resources and the ability to grow crops, I cannot imagine the new Vault Dwellers of Vault 32 not going through a similar thing. This all being said, I genuinely think that a war is going to end up breaking out between Vault 32 and 33, with Steph instigating the charge against Betty. Because let's face it, Steph has hardcore crazy eyes, man, and she has always had a specific vision for her newborn child's life. And if that vision is going to be ruined because some lady sent her to suffer and die outside of her original vault home, one-eyed Stephanie is going to stop at nothing to get back to Vault 33, even if she has to kill some of her old friends to do it. But what about Norm, huh? What's going to happen to Detective Rico Suave after being imprisoned in Vault 31? Well, that's the biggest mystery of all, in my opinion, because he really only has one option in front of him. Sleep until someone wakes him up. So, this being the case, I can see Norm waking up in one of two ways. The first way, which I find the most plausible, is by someone from one of the neighboring vaults finally venturing into Vault 31 and finding Norm there, with that person very likely being Chet after his new girl Stephanie goes to war over all three vaults. But the second, more fun scenario, in my opinion, is that Norm could actually end up becoming the next protagonist in a new Fallout game, with this new series merely meant to be his prequel story. I mean, yes, that would be out of the ordinary because Fallout games typically allow you to customize your character into any gender that you want, but there is a chance here that Norm could be staying frozen so that he could travel even farther into the Wasteland's future to see how things end up, and a futuristic Wasteland would be an incredibly fun and new way to explore the Fallout universe. But those are just my ideas for what is going to happen in Season 2. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter Instagram, YouTube, wherever I am, but most importantly, follow Heavy Spoilers here on YouTube, and when you do, hit that bell so you can get notifications every time we upload a video. But anyways, love you guys so much, thank you guys for listening to me for this long, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye!